Hello everyone, this is a video lecture for pre-calculus. We're going to be doing 10.1, ellipses. Now I got to say this one and the next section are pretty big. Um, I also have to say that I got a brand new tablet, so we're going to try this thing out and I think it's a little bit more responsive. So let's start with some formulas. <laughs> so my handwriting is not going to be perfect because it's brand new to me. Uh, formulas. So I've got uh, x squared over major squared uh, plus y squared over minor squared. Let me do a dot there. There you go. Okay. So terrible handwriting as usual. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to explain it here in a second. I'm still getting used to this thing. And uh, you're getting used to it me so hey there you go close enough okay i actually have one more formula uh, so i want to put a big or right here um, and say x squared over the minor squared uh, plus y squared over the major squared now writing major and minor every time like that it's going to be kind of tough so i use little m and big m uh, to signify what i'm talking about so what is a minor? What is a major? What's going on with all this stuff? Well, ellipses. They're kind of like ovals and stuff. Uh, so let me draw what an ellipse looks like with an X major. Uh, it kind of looks like this. So again, not perfect drawings, but there you go. It's Basically, it's wider uh, than it is taller. This one here has a Y major, and so that means it's going to be taller uh, rather than wider. So something kind of like this, okay? So again, that's the tallness there. Now, I use the word major and minor because major is bigger. And so, just as a, a side thing here, uh, major is definitely bigger than the minor, okay? <clears throat> that will apply for all of, whenever I say major, minor, I mean it's bigger. And it, there's a twist on it in the next section, but still, it, it, it really truly retains that, okay? So major is always bigger than minor. Um, so let's do a quick example about what an ellipse would look like and how we even make this thing work. So this is not part of the homework yet. Uh, it's just an example, uh, but I think it's a good example. So I got x squared uh, over 3 squared and then uh, plus y squared over 2 squared is equal to 1. So notice that this 3 right here, 3 is your x major. It's bigger. It's with the X, so it's an X major. Uh, two is your Y minor, because it's, again, smaller. And so what would this look like? Well, you're going to go out three <clears throat> on the X and up two on the Y, and then you draw it. Again, I'm getting used to this uh, new tablet thing here. There you go. That's, that's pretty close. Okay. So again, you're going out to 3, and you're going up to 2. Now, when it comes to it, x will always be going as far as this is, and y will always go as far as that is. So that, that's really easy uh, as far as you know distances and stuff like that. <clears throat> but we call it major minor because we're going to be using those terms for other things. All right, cool. So there is one small, I, I would say, discrepancy, perhaps. Sometimes my math lab will say the word major axis. Major axis, okay? When they put them together, then it means something different. What it means is uh, two times, here, I'll just put an equal sign. It means two times the major. So whatever major value you had, here in that case it was a three, and so you would say 2 times 3 in this particular case to make a 6. What they're asking for is the full total distance here. And so that would be uh, 3 plus 3 equals 6 total, okay? That's what they're asking for. If it says minor axis, same thing, 2 times the minor. Uh, but the main thing is when they use the word axis, they mean both, 2 of them times 2. Um, other than that, other than that, everything else should be good to go. Um, <clears throat> now, what their formulas often use are A and B. Now, like, they will use uh, a, X squared over A squared, Y squared over B squared, A, B, C, and all that. No, 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 no. I'm not going to teach that. I don't care. 
uh, it's just it's just not easy to switch back and forth for whenever they're using their own letters. I just don't like it, so I'm not going to do it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so here's another formula for you. Uh, the focus squared is equal to your major squared minus the minor squared. Okay, so that's another uh, formula. What are fo What is a focus or what are foci? So on an ellipse, the foci are on the inside and they kind of draw it for you. I can't really do that super well right here, but imagine that you got a piece of string and uh, it's like tied to itself. And so you got a piece of string and you wrap it around these two posts, like two nails on the wall. And then you have your, like your pen. And then you just basically run your pencil around and that, you know, it'll cause that thing to look a little different. Like over here, now your string looks more like this. Yeah. But that string length will not change. It's always the same string length. But as you're going around, it'll actually draw a uh, an ellipse. So it's pretty cool. I wish I could show it a little bit more here. Um, but there it is. So let's go back to our uh, previous um, thing here. And I want to say find the foci. Find the focus stuff. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to say my focus uh, squared is equal to your major squared minus the minor squared. And so I have 3 squared minus 2 squared. 9 minus 4 is a 5. So that's my focus squared. You can use F. Capital M, little m, F. There you go. So to get F by itself, I square root both sides, right? Uh, and so then I would get my focus distance is plus or minus square root of 5. Remember that plus minus stuff is very important. <clears throat> what they're going to want here uh, for your answer is going to be plus or minus square root of 5, comma, 0. Okay, that's your actual points that they want. And the reason why, uh, let's just say there's some more like right there on my graph. The reason why it's going to be with a zero is because your foci are on the major axis. They're right here. They're somewhere along the major. So x major, you're, so you're going to put it in the x position. The y will be zero, or later it might be shifted. Uh, but for now, zero is totally fine. So this is, this is your x major, and so you'll also have your foci uh, in the same place. Okay, cool. Some other words that they might use are uh, vertices. So one last thing, uh, a vertex or vertices are these endpoints on the majors. And so in this particular case, if they're talking vertices, this is the super easy one, uh, is plus or minus the three comma zero. Again, it's that three distance, and you're simply going out the three distance to the edge right there and there, no problem. <clears throat> so. We'll, uh, we'll see that as we keep going. I'm not too fearful of it right now, honestly. And it might seem like there's a lot going on, but in the end, it really is not too bad. So 10, 1, 1. Here we go. I've got x squared uh, over 64 plus y squared uh, over 25 uh, is equal to 1. <clears throat> well, I'm going to rewrite this. So x squared over 8 squared. Uh, and then I have y squared over 5 squared. I think I like this tab a little, a little bit better. It's more responsive. <clears throat> but it is a little tinier. You can't see that, but they're actually about half the size of the other one. And it just has this kind of feel to it that's kind of weird. It's like sticky almost. But anyways, it's doing pretty good. I know my handwriting's not good to start with, but you know we're getting by, right? Anyways, uh, so... This is the bigger one. So I got an X major of 8. And then uh, I have, this is the smaller one, so I have a Y minor uh, at 5. Cool. So let me graph it, and then we'll find this foci stuff. And so I have uh, 8 distance going out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sheep. Sheep. There you go. Close enough. Uh, so that's my ellipse. And uh, yeah, I went up to 5 and it went out to 8. 
done. Pretty easy. Now, uh, to find the focus, focus squared is equal to your major squared minus the minor squared. And so I have my 8 squared minus the 5 squared, 64 <clears throat> minus 25. I got a 39. And so to find my actual focus, I'm going to do the square root of both sides. And so I need points. Remember how this is on the x, right? So somewhere like right here and right here, I would say, is probably where the foci are. Uh, and so it's along the x's. Plus or minus square root of 39, comma, 0. And there you go. Awesome. Now, I don't know if they'll allow you to do plus and minus like that in my math lab. You might have to uh, write them out individually. But, you know, I would try the other way first because it's way easier than to have to do it twice. So that might be fine. I, I don't know. I'd try that first. I can't remember... Like, every one of my answers has a plus minus like that, so I probably did that myself. I just can't really remember if it accepts it every time. Okay, let's do another one. So, uh, whoa, 10, 1, 3. So, uh, let me just get rid of that. Start over. I got x squared uh, divided by 16, and then plus I've got y squared over 81 uh, is equal to 1. Of course, I need to rewrite this. And you can see that this will be a 4 squared. And then this right here would be a 9 squared. Cool. <clears throat> so I have an x minor, finally. An x minor, but I have a y major. And so um, let's do the math on that, I guess. What does it look like graphing wise? I got nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See you, rip. Oh man, that's not perfect. It's as if anything's perfect around here with me. Uh, there we go. Okay, close enough. So again, four for my x. Uh, 9 for my y, and uh, to find the focus, focus squared is going to be the 9 squared minus the 4 squared. Again, major is the bigger one, so 81 uh, minus 16. I got 65. It doesn't reduce, so to find just the focus, we square root both sides. Got to have a plus and minus, and there's my final answers. Now, remember that it's a y major. So you're going to be putting those on the y component. So there's your foci. Here, I probably should write that out some more, foci. It's the plural of focus. So Cool. <clears throat> yep, because you had a y major, it has to go on the y's. Okay, so now let's do some like non-standard ones. So uh, a little bit weird, uh, 10, 1, 11. I got uh, y squared minus, or I'm sorry, equals 1 minus 9x squared. And they say, rewrite it and do your stuff. Well, I need to move this over so that I have uh, 9x squared plus y squared er, uh, is equal to 1. And everything's looking really good, but it's not in the right format. I need like squares in the bottom, essentially. So, uh, but I do have a one right there, so that's, that's pretty good. What I'm gonna do is rewrite this kind of strange, and that's why I'm doing these kind of problems, because that's actually what it looks like. And here's a one, if there wasn't anything, it's a one. Now, how the heck did I do that? <laughs> well, you have a nine in the top, and so if you had a fraction in the bottom, it would, you would take it and flip it. Oh, 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 I messed up one thing, I messed up, it's not squared. It's not squared. I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah. But it's still 1 ninth. So that thing is uh, 9 over 1 in the numerator. When I flip it and put it in the denominator, it becomes a 1 ninth. I know that's really weird. We don't often do that. Um, but now, because it's it's squared, right? We need something squared. Uh, then it's 1 third squared. So yeah, I, I made a small mistake there. But uh, the idea still is that it turns into a fraction in the bottom, which is very weird. Okay. So looking at this now, one-third is actually smaller. So this is an X minor, uh, and this is a Y major. And so if you need to draw this thing, 
Uh, well, there's one. <laughs> and there's one, but we're only going to a third. So, I don't know, something kind of like this. I don't know. That's, that's fine, I guess. You know, let's put some foci on it. Bam. Bam. Look at that. Those look cool. Uh, but what are those foci point points? Um, well, focus squared is going to be your major squared uh, minus the minor squared. And so one minus a ninth is eight ninths. And um, when you square root both sides, you get the square root of eight ninths, again, plus or minus. You can distribute that to be square root eight over square root of nine, again, plus and minus, I guess. So the top is two square root of two, and the bottom's just a plain old three. And so those are going to, uh, for your y components, because it's a y major. There we go. There's your foci. I'm going to try to zoom out and see if that might help my stylus a little bit. We'll see. <clears throat> cool, cool. Um, yay. Next question. So the main point that I'm trying to get at with these upcoming questions are... I want to show you what to do in weird situations. So let's do 64x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 256. Okay, cool. Now, is that a 1? No. You need a 1 for your formula. So I'm going to divide by the 256 on both sides. Should have ran the whole distance there. There you go. Um, and so what happens is you have 64 over 256. It actually ends up being a 4. And then you have 4 over uh, 256 actually ends up being 1 16th. And this is a very, very common practice uh, where they just basically say, do this one step and it'll all be fine. Um, you just switch your numbers and yeah, it pretty much works almost every time. Just a silly way that my math lab and pretty much any other math programs uh, do. So, okay. Well, of course, we need to rewrite this. This is going to be uh, 2 squared, and this will be 4 squared. And so we can already see my majors and minors. So I got an x minor. I got a y major. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, drawing this, we got four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. See a rip, rip, sound effects included. <laughs> so uh, again, my focus squared is going to be the 16 minus the four is a 12. When you square root both sides, you get the square root of 12, which actually is, I think, two square root of three. If you reduce it down, that's a Y major, and so it's going to go in the Y uh, component. I mean, we we do this a lot. I, you know what? I got a different answer here. Hold on. Oh, do you see what I did wrong? I even talked about it. Look, dyslexia. I'm sorry. Let's back up. I messed up, but it's it's a stupid mess up. 64 should be right here. <laughs> wow, I feel really dumb. And uh, the 4 is fine. That's fine. Again, that 4 is this 4. 64 ought to be 64. I said it, but then I didn't look back up. So, yeah, that was totally my mistake. Watch to the end. <laughs> so, yeah, you're still going to get a major, but this is an 8 instead. Uh, so 64 and things all are different now. Um <laughs> 64 minus 4 is a 60, and so then uh, when you square root both sides, your focus is going to be square root plus or minus square root 60, uh, which does reduce to, I'm just quickly doing it here, 2 square root of 15, and so that's, that's what's really going on. I make mistakes too, and I'm not going to take them out of the video because I'm, you know, I don't want to show you that I'm per perfect or anything. Also, do watch to the end of the question, because uh, I... I make mistakes. You make mistakes, right? Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, so it's no longer four, but it's eight. And so uh, put some extra tip marks in there. Yay! Now it's eight and negative eight. And you never knew it. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
Okay, um, let's do another one. It's all part of life. You know, you learn most by making mistakes, truly. So make them often and then fix them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one, two. Whoop, 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 whoop. That is definitely not perfect, but it'll it'll have to do. So we got seven, we got two essentially, okay? They say from this graph, make the equation. Well, you can see that seven is your x major, and that two is your y minor, smaller. And so uh, x major of seven, y minor of two is equal to one. I mean, that's basically your answer. They're going to, my math lab wants you to simplify and all that kind of stuff, of course. Uh, but I actually prefer to leave it that way because it tells you more. So there's your answer. They say now find the foci uh, stuff. And so just the quick version, I guess, is square root of 7 squared minus the 2 squared. Square root of uh, 49 minus 4. Square root of 45. This is all plus and minus, of course. I'm just cheating a little bit. I think that's it. I don't know if it reduces anymore. I oh, it does. It does. It's um, three square root of five. So that's what they want for your foci. And it's on an x component because it got an x major, three square root of five, zero. Ooh. <clears throat> okay, so. It seems that I need to now move on to the uh, next half of this, essentially. And so we're now going to do uh, shifted, shifted ellipses. So let me show you what a shifted one is. Um, I got x minus h squared uh, divided by the major squared plus y minus k squared all over the minor squared is equal to 1. Notice that I shifted it h comma k. Uh, again, or I can have h with a minor. And then I got y with a k and a major. OK, cool. So either way, now shifted is just saying that it, it moves somewhere. So this is my new center at h comma k. Yep, that'll work. And so then I do my ellipse or a y major. Let's just say I have right here is my new center, h comma k. Up and down ellipse, close enough. Okay, so you can move it around. Um, I have... I have an example, and I, I guess I might as well do it since it's it's a pretty good example. Sometimes my math lab doesn't like hit hit it just right, you know, and I like to show uh, what we're really doing. So let's just say I have x minus four squared, and then I have a three squared, uh, and then I have a y plus one squared, all over four squared, is equal to one. So let's uh let's see its center now is at 4 comma negative 1. Notice that it's negative 1 uh, because, I, you know, inside opposites. Essentially, it's like solve for x. So solve for x, you get a 4. Solve for y, you get a negative 1. <coughs> so um, we have a, an x minor. I have a y major. Use capitals. Okay. And so when I graph this thing, I need to start at 4, negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. That's my new center. Um, and then I need to graph it. So 4 distance from there is 1, 2, 3, 4 distance up. 1, 2, 3, 4 distance down. And then uh, 3 distance to the side. So 3 would be about right here. 1, 2, 3. And it... It's not an actual circle because it is a little bit taller than it is wide, but there you go. 
Cool. Again, this is a 4, and this distance here is a 3 from the center. Okay. Cool. Let's do some uh, let's do some problems on the homework 10. 123. <clears throat> so they give me a graph. Um, so here we go. 1, 2, 3, negative 2. There's my center. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you because it's easier to see uh, when you're looking at it without me having to draw it that your center is going to be at 3, negative 2. It's right there. Uh, and then it goes up to, down to, and it goes side to side by 3. So 3, 1, 2, 3. So it looks kind of like this. Again, not perfect. There you go. So I've got three distance this way, and I've got two distance this way. So then you can see that this is your y minor, while this is an x major. OK, awesome. Um, and so we need an equation for this thing. And this is actually really easy. So x minus 3 all squared, all divided by x major of 3 squared. Uh, y plus 2, again, because inside opposites, how do you like solve for y? What would you get is a negative 2 there. Uh, and then I have only a 2 distance for the y. Okay. Simplify, of course, but don't really simplify. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, talk, about, talk about inconsistencies sometimes. So they want you to leave it alone at the top but at the bottom they want you to find these numbers for no reason at all it actually kind of irritates me uh, because why are you doing that but not anything else ah the mysteries of my math lab okay keep cruising so uh foci we have uh zero and then plus or minus seven and they say we have vertices. I think this is the first time they actually mention vertices. I can't really remember. Um, I don't really pay attention to the words much anyways. So we got that. And uh, then they say figure out the equation. What's the equation? Okay. Still learning the stylus. <laughs> okay. So if you look around, it actually is going to be centered at zero. Um, which is nice. The reason why is because what's what's in between 7 and 7? What's in between uh, 10 and negative 10? 0. So 0, 0 is going to be my center. Um, what they're saying is that your focus is equal to 7, and your vertices, that's your majors. Here, I'll even write that up. This is a major. Is equal to 10. And so uh, what we need now is to find the minor and so that's the focus squared is equal to major squared minus the minor squared. So 7 squared is equal to 10 squared minus minor squared. So uh, 49 is equal to 100 minus minor squared. If you move this around kind of like this, uh, minor squared is equal to 51. And so your minor is equal to the square root of 51. Plus or minus, of course. So how does this work now? Let's get the answer. Again, uh, what's my major and minor? If you look here, <clears throat> your majors are y components, right? See how they're both y's? So that's a y major. And so my y component will be that 10. So here we go. I got x squared over something, and then I got a y squared over something is equal to 1. Well, my major is a y, and that was a 10. They already gave it to me. For my minor, it was a square root of 51, but again, I'm squaring it. Okay. Um, well, if you want to simplify it, the square and the square root cancel, leaving just a plain old 51. And of course, 10 squared uh, is a 100. Okay. There we go. Cool. <clears throat> um, how many more questions do we got? We got quite a bunch left. Quite a bunch. Okay. So, next one. It says we have a major axis which horizontal. 
Okay. Words are not my strong suit, okay? Major axis is horizontal. It says that this major axis has a length that is 14. Okay. Um, and then it says the length of the minor axis is equal to 2. And we're centered at 0, 0. At least something around here is nice. So what's all this major minor axis stuff? Well, we already talked about it. I warned you. Your major, your actual major here, which they said is horizontal, is going to be an X major, uh, is actually a 7 because it's half of that. Uh, this right here, your Y minor, uh, is going to be a 1. And so using these two guys here with the center 0, 0, uh, we can create an equation like now. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> so x squared uh, over 7 squared, a y squared over 1 squared is equal to 1. Simplify it. They want 49. And because, you know, you don't divide by 1, what you actually need to do here is just write y squared by itself. It, it feels kind of naked, <laughs> um, but that's that's the answer, so there you go. Okay, keep cruising, 10, 1, 39. So uh, I got x plus 4 squared all over 16, and then plus I got, this is weird here, 4 times y minus 5 squared all over 6. Oh, I did the 16 already. Here, forgive me a little bit. This 16 here wasn't there. It was just this guy, and it said solve. So I divided by 16 already. My bad. Um, that's okay. Um, so here we go. I got a 16 in the bottom. And so that's going to be that 4 squared. Yeah. In this case, I got a 4 in the bottom, which ends up being a 2 squared. And then just a 1. Okay. So, we have a major. It's an X, X major. Uh, we have a Y minor. And uh, we have a new center. At negative four comma five, cool. Okay, um, so let's find the focus and graph it and stuff. I don't know, graphing is not too bad. So uh, one two three four one two three four five. There's my new center. I'm gonna go four distance out, which makes me here one two three four, then only two one two. One, two, something kind of like that. Ellipse. Yay. <laughs> okay, cool. Whatever. Um, we've done this focus thing like so much. It's just crazy at this point. Uh, 16 minus 4, square root of 12, which is uh, th 2 square root of 3. Now, this is where it might get a tiny bit different. Notice that we have the center is not 0, 0. So when they're asking for my foci, my foci, it, remember that this is an x major, so it's got to be in the x component. It's going to be the negative 4 where we started from, and then plus or minus the 2 squared of 3. And, of course, that 5 is my y value. So there you go. Cool. Uh, just make sure that you have your center, and then you go from there. I'm looking at my notes, and I actually got it wrong. Um, <laughs> like, I know I got that one wrong. Uh, there, I'm just, I'm just copying for my notes, because one day I'm going to look at this and say, what did I do? <laughs> okay. Keep cruising. 10, 151. So this one's a big one. 
like it's actually we're getting to like an interesting problem because honestly between you and me i was getting bored uh of doing the same thing like so often uh now we actually get something new going on which is pretty cool okay that is crazy looking <laughs> and that's okay so we need to, it says convert into standard form, and I'm going to say that what you need to do is complete the square. Um, I'm going to write that on the side over here. Complete the square. I don't know if they say that, but they need to, because that's, that's really what we're doing here is complete the square. So what do we do to complete the square? How does this work? Like, I don't know if you've ever done this before, so this is going to be a whole new experience. First off, get this number over there. Um, so you just add it to the other side. Uh, but I don't want to write just that step here. I want to show you what's really going on. Um, <clears throat> I also want to group like terms. So see these guys here? They're going to be coming together. And then these two are going to be coming together. And so I've got 64x squared uh, minus the 512x. And then over here we got plus 100y squared plus 200y. And then uh, equals the 5, 2, 7, 6. Okay, so that's step one is kind of just group things and put them in the right place. Now, the real complete the square is at this moment. I need to factor out a 64 and then get some kind of like placeholders. I'll show you. So let me factor out the 64. And so I'm left with x squared minus something. And that's actually uh, 8 times 64 is uh, 512. And so uh, that's going to be an 8x. But then I'm going to say plus and minus something. This is that complete the square business. What I'm doing here is nothing new. Just factoring that out is nothing. This is the new stuff. Like if you want me to do two separate steps, then I can do that. 64x squared minus 8x. And then you move on. Plus 100 times y squared blah, blah, blah. You don't need that step. I mean, but that's a nice step, but it's just too much. So again, this is the new stuff, okay? Um, here, what are we going to factor out? A 100. Awesome. So let's do that. Y squared plus 2y. And like, we're done, right? Well, yeah, that is you're done. Uh, but again, to complete the square stuff, you're going to need a little extra stuff here, uh, just in case. Uh, and then the 5, 2, 7, 6, I guess at the end. Now, why do I put two boxes there, plus and minus and all that stuff? Well, if you're going to make this problem the same, then it needs to add and subtract the same number. So, like, for example, what if I put a 1 right here and then a 1 right there? It's the same number, right? So, like, plus 1, minus 1, they would cancel, and you're back to the original. Now, that's not going to be useful to us. There is a useful number we need. <clears throat> and so let's go and do that useful number. Here is complete the square. Here we go. You take this negative 8... And you divide it by 2, you get negative 4. That's still an important number, but we're going to use that later. First off, we need to keep going. So the next step is I'm going to take the negative 4, and I'm going to square it. And now it makes a positive 16. That's the number that I'm going to use uh, both here and here. And so basically, I have a 16 and a 16. Plus 16 minus 16. Again, that doesn't do anything. You could just cancel it. But I don't want to. I, I want to use it uh, here in a second. And so let's do this one over here. So I take the 2, and I divide it by 2, and I get a positive 1. And I take that 1, and I'm going to square it to get, well, positive 1. And so I'm going to put a 1 right here and here. Now, I did that because this and this are going to be uh, perfect squares. I think they're what they're called. So... Uh, let me show you. I'm going to go to the next step now. This is the actual next step. So 64 times, and now what I have is x minus 4 squared. And then I have a minus 16. I'll explain it here in just a second. 100, and then times, I got here a y plus 1 squared, uh, and then minus 1 and then equals that 5, 2, 7, 6. Okay, so what just happened here? Well, I told you the red boxes here turn into these perfect squares. Here, I just want to like show you. 
red box turned into red box, okay? Um, nothing else changed. Notice that 16 is a 16. The 1 is still a 1. So they just kind of got left behind. Um, again, if you've done this before, that's awesome. But I got to say, this is going to be important to your future. So it's still important to pay attention. We're going to do this a lot in Calculus 2 in particular. Uh, I remember many crazy problems doing this. <laughs> and that's fine. It's all part of it. So, um, Okay. Now, why did we do all that? You'll see, we're almost there, almost there. I'm gonna distribute the 64 and distribute the 100. And so we get 64 uh, x minus four, all squared. And then 64 times 16 is 1024. And again, it's negative. I got 100 y plus 1 all squared minus 100. You can see right there, minus 100. Uh, it still equals that 5276. Okay, so I'm going to add this to the other side. I'm going to add this to the other side. Like over here, just move them over. Uh, and so 64 x minus 4 squared. 100 y plus 1 all squared is equal to, now if I add 1,000, if I add 100, I, uh, I actually get 6,400. You see where that came from? Look right here, 6,400, 6,400. So when I divide by 6,400 on both sides, then these guys here, I got to do it right. Last time I messed it up. Now it's going to be a 100. And here on this side, it's going to be a 64. There we go. Because they just cancel each other out, essentially. We're really close. That 100 is a 10 squared. So that's 10 squared. And then I have y plus 1 squared divided by 8 squared is equal to 1. All right, now this is what they wanted. We're done right there. But I wanted to show you more because now we can use it for majors and minors and all that kind of stuff. In fact, that's what the next part of this problem is. Um, so they want you to graph it, find the foci, and all that stuff. Um, and so we have an x major... We have a Y minor. Okay. So here we go. Um, graphing it, my center is at 4, negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, negative 1. X major of 10, so that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then 8, 1, 2. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew. Oh no, it's like right there and right there. Sorry, uh, and then right here. Okay. Oh man, that's the best ellipse I've ever done. <laughs> Gosh. All right, let's find them foci. <laughs> so I'm just going to skip to it here. Uh, you got a 100 minus the 64, major, minor, that kind of thing. And uh, I get square root of 36, uh, which is going to be a 6, plus or minus, of course. So I'm going to take my uh, center, and I'm going to shift it by that. So what I actually had uh, was a 4. And uh, it's going to be plus or minus 6. It's an x major. And then uh, the negative 1. So I actually have to find those now, those two points. I don't think they'll let you do that. So uh, negative 2, negative 1, and then 10, negative 1. And there's your two foci. And so I can graph those. So negative 2 is somewhere around right there. And then uh, 10 is... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, there's about right there. That makes sense. Okay. Oof, man. That was a huge problem. Huge. I have another huge problem. 
it's literally identical. After this big one, I have an application type problem, which is a little silly. Two GeoGebra problems, and then we're done. It's just crazy. I, I feel like maybe I'm doing too much of your homework. What do you think? Should I like just do half of this? I mean, it would make it much shorter videos and I would not lose as much patience either. I'd say, oh yeah, and there we go. And you got it now, right guys? Is that is that a good thing for you? No? You actually want me to do all these problems every time? Don't you care about my feelings? <laughs> I'm serious. So uh, let's move this over. Complete the square again. My X's are going to be together. And I'm going to factor out a 36. So I'm skipping like two steps here. So factor out a 36, I actually get a 14X. Again, plus something, minus something. And then I got my 16 factoring out. Y squared, factor that out, you get a 2. Wow. That looks so similar to last time. Here, let's move it to the side just a tiny bit. It's now a negative over that side. Okay, uh, so we already did this problem. I'm just gonna do it again. So two over two is a one. One squared is a one. Not worried about that. This one's a little different. So I got 14 divided by two uh, is a seven. And 7 squared is equal, what am I doing? 7 squared is equal to 49. So you're going to put a 49 there and there. Now when you do that perfect square thing, this number right here is what's important. So notice when you're doing this, isn't it 7 plus, uh, or x plus 7? Right here, isn't this going to be a y plus 1? And so that middle term is actually determining what you're going to have that perfect square result in. So there's like a little cheat for you, I guess. Dyslexia. Okay. All right. Did it redistribute? Redistribute. Oh, man. I wonder, this tablet does seem better. I just wonder if it feels more responsive simply because it's like slowing me down. The, the, like the style of the pad is, it's not slick like the one that I am used to. Um, but I, I feel like I can like get more detail in it. Actually, it responds better. So it's kind of like a mixed bag here. Anyways, I'm going to add this to this side and add that over there. You, I mean, you get the idea here. This is, this is so old hat now, man. Er. Okay, close enough. Uh, and then, okay, uh, five seventy six is what I got whenever I add them all over there. Divide by the five seventy six, so you get a one. And wow, I just wonder if it's 36 and 16 that makes that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, this is, we've done this so many times now. Uh, and by so many times, I mean like twice. And one time I got it wrong. So, <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, so that's, that's what they wanted. Find the foci after that. Oh, man. Don't you get tired of doing this? Got to get tired of doing this, right? So um, my foci is going to be a square root of 36 minus 16. I don't do any of this on my notes. My notes, I actually use squares and all that stuff. I am just, um, I'm just ultra not wanting to care anymore. So, you know, I got uh, two square root of five. And I'm assuming you can at least get to that point. Remember that my center is actually negative seven, negative one, and so I'm, and it's a Y major. That's my major right there. So it's a Y major. I mean, this is the stuff that I'm not writing all the time. So you're gonna stick it in right there. Because there's a square root, you don't really have to simplify any. 
thankfully this time. So it looks kind of like this here. There's your foci. Oi. All right. Now, um, the next problem is an application problem. It's talking about a truck that's uh, passing under a bridge. And I mean, this, this would take so forever if, um, if I wanted to make, you know, all the idealistic understanding and take your time on it and stuff. So there's this truck, here's its wheels, and it's driving underneath this big thing. Like, here's the front of it, there's some headlights, that kind of thing. And there's the person inside, he's like, yay, I'm driving. <laughs> Put your hands on the wheel. Um, but, like, that's the thing. So uh, he's driving this truck through a tunnel here, and um, he wants to make sure he passes through and doesn't hurt, you know, hit the thing. Um, well, the tunnel is 10 tall uh but the truck is seven tall so you're like oh yeah it passes mm. so it's eight foot wide okay and the uh the tunnel is 30 foot wide like this so will it clear okay well first off we need to draw what this ellipse is this is called a semi ellipse because it's only half uh what's actually going on is that it has a 15 and a 10. So 15 is still major. And so if I were to write the equation, I'd say it's x squared, uh, 15 squared. Oops. That's not terrible. It's just, okay. And then um, y squared over 10 squared uh, is equal to 1. So there's my equation. Now, we need to know if it will clear, if it has enough y value there, right? This P, point P right here, what's the Y value for that? You'd say it's 7. Um, kind of. <laughs> the truck is 7. But what about this right here on the ellipse itself? I guess my point P is not on the truck because I already know the truck. Uh, my point P is on the ellipse. But, like, are those the same point? Basically, at, at this X value, am I expecting a 7 or something else? Well, that's not an 8. If you cut it in half, that's actually a 4 distance. And so uh, what I have, this little point up here, is at a 4 comma y. I need to know what's the y value for the ellipse right here. And then we compare it to 7, okay? So I know my x value is a 4, right? So I'm going to take a 4 and plug it in there. Um, and then I get a value, and, and I'm just going to skip to the end there. I got 9.637. Um, and so, again, I'm comparing that uh, to the 7. So this right here seems to be at a 9.6 height when the truck is only at a 7. So does it clear? Yes. So you would say, uh, yes, it clears. And there you go. I don't, I don't know how you would say that. You might have to put this number in there, but that's what's going on. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I got two GeoGebra problems, and I got big, like, like, X's through this stuff, so apparently I wasn't doing it right. I don't know. There's just many. Okay, so, yeah, let's, I'm just going to talk the best I can through this. Um, sometimes, like, in class, I'd pull up GeoGebra to kind of demonstrate, but... Uh, like in person, but I can't really do that here. Copyright issues. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> uh, don't you love it? So anyways, uh, find three points on the ellipse given uh, that you have. There's the three points. Oh, come on now. Three. There you go. Given that you have these two foci. Well, these two foci are fixed on there, and then they said, uh, find three other points somewhere on the ellipse. Uh, this is not hard in the end, so I got one, two, three, and then a one. So there's a foci, and there's a foci, and that's all they got, and they say, find three points. So what I did uh, was it, you have to look for the sum of distances of the two foci are equal. Huh? So, in a, and, and everything's symmetric. Remind, remember, things are symmetric here. 
So you're going to pick a point and you're going to be happy with it. Okay. So let me show you. I'm going to go up two and one right here. And there you go. So this distance here plus this distance here need to always be the same for the other points. And so what I did is I went over one up two. So there's one distance. And then I went over three down two. Okay. I know that sounds a little complicated, but here we go. Here's the next one. Okay. I'm going to put it right. Wait, hold on. Oh, I see what I was doing wrong. One, two, three, two, one. Oh, that is. Hold on. I think I clicked it weird and it and it might have worked and I wasn't thinking. I don't know, maybe I drew it weird. Anyways, here, look. Let's pick that point. So notice that I go three and then two, and then I go uh two down and over one. I did the same format, just did symmetric. Okay. Uh and you can go down and do the same thing. So here's another one. So again I went three over and then I got go two over kind of thing. There's your three points. If you want a fourth one, here's a fourth one right there. You can see the symmetry going on. Again, those are foci, so they're going to go around it like this a little bit. There you go. It's not perfect. But just pick one point, like a distance, you know, like one, two, and then from there just, you know, always do the same symmetry. Just make it symmetric. There's my main key. It says right here, many solutions, pick a point, make the other symmetric. There you go. Awesome. All right. Last one, GeoGebra number 22. So uh, I have my foci are at negative uh, 4, 2, and negative 2, 2. And it says, find an equation that the sum of distances is 7.6. Huh? <laughs> sum of distances is equal to 7.6. I was looking at this thing like, what is going on? Um, I know this is, man. okay, it's fine. It's fine. We can do this. Okay. So first off, uh, find the center. And if you look around here, they got the same Y value. So you know, it's going to be a two there. And uh, the X value is going to be a negative three. Okay. Your foci distance is a one because from your center to these guys is a one. Um, now we just need to find uh, my major and my minor. Once I find those, then everything will be okay. Well, I do know that my have my focus squared is equal to major squared minus minor squared. So that's now a one squared is equal to this stuff. And that might be handy here in just a second. Now, we still have to take into, like, so that's, that's nice. Like, hang on to that. We might use it later. We still have to take into account the 7.6 business. <clears throat> so uh, how does that work? Well, this is where things get weird. So um, I'm going to draw a, uh, a kind of like a prototype of what's going on here. I got a focus point here and a focus point there. Okay. And I need this distance here plus this distance here out to some point P uh, to add to make the 7.6. So like, like this is a D1 and a D2 or a D2 and a D1 or whatever you're going to do. Uh, but if you add those two together, D1 and D2, uh, then you get 7.6 like they're saying. Now, what's interesting is that the distance between these here, if you subtract them, it should be a 2. And the reason why is because the distance between these guys is 2, 2 distance. So it's kind of like D1 minus D2 is equal to 2. Again, it could be the other way like i think this is a this is going to be the d1 and this is going to be the d2 or something it doesn't really matter just we're trying to solve and notice this is a system of equations right Ooh, it's a matrix bam look at that solve for d1 d2 so i got a d1 of 4.8 and i got a d2 of 2.8 okay so those are going to be important what those are uh at least one of them is going to be your major and so notice that this guy right here, this D2 or whatever it is, I think D2 because it's a smaller one, uh, that's going to be your major. That's your major distance. And, of course, it's an X major. 
And so uh, 1 squared, going back to that formula up there, 1 squared is equal to 2 point... Why do I have 2.8? Oh, I messed up a little. Hold on. This is not your major. It's really close, though. Really close. Hold on. It's not your major. Really, really close. Hold on, hold on. That is this distance here, but it needs to be from the center, and the center is right here. So what's this distance? If that distance was 2.8, and you have to add one more, it's 3.8. Ah! Oh, so your major is 3.8. Oh, man. Okay, so then you got 1 squared is equal to 3.8 squared minus the minor squared. Solve for minor. Uh, and so my minor is, um, well, my minor squared is 13.49. 4, 4, I'm sorry, 4, 4. It's just bad handwriting. Uh, and that's good enough because what we need to do is the equation. So here we go. Uh, X plus 3, because that was the center. Uh, squared, and then we have uh, 3.8 squared, because that was my major. Uh, my y, I have a y minus 2, because again, that was where it was centered, was it 2? Uh, and then I have 13.44, okay, straight up, is equal to 1. Now, GeoGebra accepts the unsimplified, so this squared, and that's not, and it's totally okay. Cool, do it. Whew, that was a wild one. Okay. We're done. Thank you very much. Have a great day.